One of the modern aspect people is always asking from Buddhist monks is all about death. Yeah. Uh, I guess death in the Eastern and the Western point of view, we have a different approach to look at it. Uh, from the Western point of view, death is more private. But in Buddhist point of view, death is more communal. It is uh, all about the learning about the fact of the reality. So that's why uh, you can see that in Thailand, in Buddhist country, like in Thailand, the death doesn't really make you cry, actually. When you have this, all the cremations or the, the funeral here, you hardly see the people and people are crying. It is kind of a communal uh, event. So people use that death, uh, they decorate the death in the coffin and so and so, but it is the place that they invite the monks to chant and they give a sermon. So it is a time for all the friends and family you know, near and there to come and have a chit chat and uh, listen in front of this dead body. We will sit and listen to the monks chanting, which is a chant about the all this impermanence, all about the how to how to console your mind after someone is dying and so and so. But it is sometimes it is in the Pali, people don't understand it. But people sometimes give a sermon on that same occasion, so people do understand it. So in a way that for Buddhist country, for Buddhist idea, we don't see death as a something which is dangerous, which is not favorable at all. Uh, we accept that death is a bonus when you was born. It depends on when you want to use that bonus part. So when you are born, it's already there with you. It depends on uh, when we want to use it, that's all. So once you use it, uh, then of course, the monks will see that it is normal to die. And then especially, I always teach in the funeral that why we sad, so sad when somebody get die. The die, death and the sadness, is that related? I say no, at all, not at all. If death is related with sadness, every day we are seeing the news, we are seeing the newspaper, there's somebody is dying every moment, every, every minute. So we have to cry and we have to be sad all the time. We are sad when someone who is near and dear of us, we, they die, then we got sad, which means that uh, there is no such thing as, I always say that there is no such thing as I from Buddhist point of view. The I is an embody of so many things. When you are born, you are, pre, you know, you are fresh, you don't have any knowledge, you don't, you don't have this any favor, you don't have this anything. It depends on the, you know, parents, what they put into you. So in a way that when you become as somebody, I am as Anil, but where is that Anil? If you use the vipassana power to look at it, then I wouldn't see anil. I will see the flesh. I would see the skin. I will see the bone. And if you go back to the, all this memory, then I will see the, all the memory which I might have uh, with my father, I might have uh, with my mother. But since I left Nepal with my parents when I was 14, so I have to say that I don't have that memory of my father and mother that much as much as I have lived with my master. And I, have, I lived my master more than 40 years. So in becoming Anil, I would say that I have uh, my parents, my father and mother, maybe uh, if I put in the numerical, maybe so let's say that 10% and 10%, and I have my master maybe 40%, I have my friend, I have my professor from Cambridge, I have my, I don't know, some book that, some friends. So, it's make everything come together and make an ill. So when somebody die, it means that if my father die, it means that my 10% of my selfness of what an ill just blank out at the time. And that's why it makes you uncertain. It makes you unsecure. Just like a, a part of junk of your body just cut out. Then you feel that, okay, you know, you feel unsecure. But it depends on how deep how important that is. So if it is uh, very important, it may take some time to heal. It may take some time to replace that. So if it is not so important, oh, so sorry, I feel so sad, my condolence, and you already feel that gap already. So that is what the Buddhist point of view looking at a death. 
looking at death as example, as a lesson. So he said that uh, death is cannot be prevented. Death is always there. Even you are king, always you are, even you are beggar, the death will not spare you. That is all the chanting we chant. The death is always take care. And whether you are in a high in the, on Mount Everest, you are in the deep in the ocean, the death will still follow you. You can't get away from the death. But once you know that a death is there, death is you have to look at it as an obstacle. As it is a kind of a obstacle, it is a problem. Because it is a problem because if you want to do something good, the death comes and then it stops of doing what you want to do. So that's why it's a big problem. So that's why you know that you can't prevent that. So use the death as a prompt and urge yourself that uh, how much time I still have got it to fulfill my, who, I, who I am, to fulfill my duty as a father, to fulfill my duty as a monk, to fulfill duty as a student, to fulfill duty as a king, as a politician. Look at that time factor and then do best maximize whatever the time left and then look at the death. Death is always there. It will come anytime. So, you know, prompt your actions of doing good. So that is what we look at the death. So once you are died, so, you know, nothing can be done. It is, a, it is a problematic in the sense that it cut off the things. Though actually death in Buddhism is a, it is a synonym to time. Time and death is the same word. When you say that a day somebody die in Buddhism says that your time is up. So the times basically means that the Buddha says that we are, li- we are living our life by time. So we are the slave of our time. That's why we are living by the past or by the future. And because of by the past and future, these are living time. Buddha says that that is a wrong. So if you want to live your life, you live it here and now. To be mindful here and now. The here and now is a no time. It's a no time zone. But you never live that no time zone. You always dictate your life by the past or by the future. Which means that you are dictating your life by the death. Because past also death, the future also death. Because synonym is the time. But the true life shouldn't be dictated by those deaths. Should be live beyond that time, beyond that time. That is why Buddhism is a timeless teaching. So you have to live timelessly. You have to live beyond the time. So when you are watching this interview, if you are watching concentratedly, you are living here and now. But while you are watching, you are thinking of your past. If you are thinking of future, you won't understand what I'm saying. But at the same time, you are blocked by the death. You are blocked by the time factor. And you will not be able to enjoy the here and now. So the whole idea from Buddhist point of view is that whether you are Buddhist or not Buddhist, but take death as a lesson. And then just see that how much time it left for you to do the good things to fulfill your role as who you are.